The government is inflating a student debt bubble. Now the Senate will try to make the debt a little less burdensome. What will the House do? We're going to talk about that in a second. Good morning. Welcome to the News Hub. I'm Rolf Winkler. On screen right there you see, of course, that student debt is now a huge burden for the American economy. It's surpassed credit card debt, surpassed auto loans. And joining us is Rachel Ensign from Sunday Journal. Good morning. Thanks Good morning. for joining us, Rachel. Good to be here. So, of course, we got that chart on there mm -hmm. to demonstrate for people at home just how much the student loan burden has grown. Mm -hmm. um, just to, again, put this in perspective, since 2008, as you can see, student loan debt has grown 54%. Credit card debt is down 20%, auto loans down 8%. Um, and now, what we're talking about today, of course, is government loans, which make up the vast majority mm -hmm. of these, correct? They're going to lower interest rates on it, according to a Senate deal? Yeah, well, they're going to actually keep interest rates on a certain type of very popular loan the same. They were set to double, um, I think, later this week, and now they're going to stay the same. So it's sort of like the payroll tax cut, you know, something that wasn't politically feasible to go up, and they came to a deal at the last minute. Okay, and of course, we're, it, it was coming, it was going to rise again on, on Sunday, was yes, it? Yes, Sunday. Sunday, okay. And the interest rate where it has been is 3.4% mm -hmm. and was going to 6.8%, 6.8, which for all the people counting at home, if I'm doing my math right, I'm going to do this in my head, but if you have about a $30,000 loan, you're going to save about $1,000 in interest per year. Yeah, I think something roughly around speaking. That. And and um, since, you know, interest can accrue very quickly, it, it, it can save people a lot. Interesting, because of course yeah. if people aren't paying back at least the interest on their loans, then the principal balance keeps growing and that can be yeah. difficult for students right coming out of college maybe not getting high paying jobs and they're graduating with with ever more debt Rachel tell me a little bit about the Senate deal so this is mm -hmm. this is again is is the Senate's agreed to keep the rates low but what, what is the House doing? Well, the Senate um, says they've come to a tentative agreement and they say that they think the House is going to be going along with it. But at the same time, as we've seen in a lot of situations this year, like with the payroll tax cut, people in the House, especially Republicans, may balk at, at the deal. But, I mean, there is the question of whether it's politically feasible for them not to allow them to stay at 3.4%. Yeah, and of course, I guess keeping the interest rate lower is going to cost in the aggregate about yeah, six billion dollars what how are they going to pay for this under this deal well they in the senate they're saying that they're going to pay for it by um, changing really technical aspects of a pension insur a federal pension insurance plan and um, so i mean that's something that won't really i don't i don't think personally will impact as many people directly you know immediately as the loan hike is it is it kind of magical accounting i mean i guess I'm wondering, so basically they're going to change pension laws to prevent, companies won't have to contribute as much to their defined yes. benefit pension plans, and I guess that means the, the, their, the, the tax savings they get when they make those contributions <laughs> will be lower. Um, yes. But I wonder if that's kind of short-sighted, having companies mm -hmm. contribute less to their pension plans. We know that those aren't exactly funded well. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a really great point, and I think that it, it could potentially be something where they're just delaying um, some sort of pain for later so that they can make this fix early on. Now, just a reminder for people, it, it was interesting, of course, earlier this year, or I should say last year, the Occupy Wall Street movement. If you, if you kind of mm -hmm. dug into a lot of the complaints it was not a well-formed movement by any means, but if you dug into the complaints of a lot of a lot of the kids there, it was student debt. Yeah. Right. I mean, tell me why? Why? It's just that this has become so burdensome for for people, right? Yeah, it's become very burdensome for people. Um, I think the average that the uh, graduate in 2010 came out of school with was twenty five thousand um, dollars. Twenty five thousand dollars in debt, and that's a lot of money. And and there are a lot of people who I think the Occupy movement exemplified who come out with like $100,000 in debt, which you're really going to be paying back off of for the rest of your life. I wonder, baby boomers are probably complaining about kids today, but yeah. <laughs> they didn't graduate with that kind of debt when they went, when they left college, I, I can imagine. No, they didn't. Yeah, so, okay, so I'm trying to, what, what else, um, again, so we're looking for a potential house deal here. Mm -hmm. That has to happen again also ahead of Sunday in yes. order for this to go into effect. Otherwise, you'll get effectively a doubling of interest rates yes. for for student loans from 3.4 to, to 6.8 percent. Yeah, so you know we're gonna have to watch out for the house deal later this week, which I mean it seems like based on what everyone's saying will will probably happen. 